Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in today's video you're going to learn effective ways to practice guitar with a metronome. Now traditionally a metronome can be used in a variety of ways. It can help you increase your speed on guitar, it can help with your rhythm and your timing and it can also help track progress and they're all great things to do. But there are more nuanced ways that you can work with a metronome to really move the needle on your playing as far as the progress you make. In this lesson I'm joined by guitar practice expert Mike Filipov from practiceguitarnow.com to discuss and demonstrate little known ways to use a metronome to really accelerate your guitar playing progress. So Mike is the go-to guy for all things practicing guitar. He's helped hundreds if not thousands of people really accelerate their playing through methods and strategies for practicing guitar. And in this video Mike's going to take us through some not so conventional ways to use a metronome to really help with your guitar playing, including what you must do before moving or altering the tempo of the metronome. So let's get to it. Next thing is about horizontal versus vertical progress. And the idea here is this. Oftentimes, especially so more so maybe in my world, because everybody's obsessed with playing as fast as possible. And nothing wrong with that, by the way. Don't let anybody tell you that speed is, you know, boring or whatever. Speed is awesome. So if you're if you're uh, all about speed, it's awesome. When you are pushing the pushing, trying to get the speed faster, everybody's obsessed with doing that too quickly and that 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 is an example of vertical progress if you are playing something at 80 bpm you want to get to 100 to 120 or whatever my advice is even if i'll say 80 bpm you're playing a run and it feels sort of okay it feels good like if you feel relaxed the notes you can hear the notes everything is in time and, and it's clean before you make that jump whether you know the contrasting jump or the uh, like the, the bigger jump or the, the, even a tiny one, stay at 80 BPM and find a way to make the lick harder to play in a small way, sort of like the context expanding variation idea. Uh, but here you're actually trying to make it not just different, but actually harder. For example, you can pick the notes extra hard and focus on relaxing your fretting hand or keeping it just as relaxed and not let it tense up in response to the harder pick stroke. So the tempo stays the same, but you are making one element of it, relaxation in this case, harder for yourself. You can double pick the notes. So the fretting hand is gonna move at the same speed, but you can, uh, but you're, you're gonna be picking faster, picking every note two times. Or you move the lick to a lower part of the fretboard where you're playing, let's say from, uh, C major to F major, and there's a bit of a stretch involved in the fretting hand. So again, the tempo is the same, but you're challenging your fretting hand control in that way. And the more of these milestones you can check off at the tempo you think you already got, or at, at the, let's say 80 BPM in this example, the easier it's going to be to take the next jump to let's say 100 and have that feel just as uh, confident and, and relaxed and comfortable as opposed to going straight at it but having these little loose ends sort of untied. So that's an example of horizontal progress. And the more you can do that and have the patience to do that, the easier it's gonna be to make that then vertical jump and reach those tempo goals you want. So that's something to think about as you practice. Great. And I would just remind people here, because obviously I know you're gonna have some of your students possibly here, Mike, and, and of the your world with all the shredding and the playing, which is fantastic. But for the acoustic people, uh, all this stuff, I mean, uh, I learned a lot of this stuff from Mike and applied it to my acoustic playing. So the whole, you know, keeping the hand relaxed, but plucking harder or picking harder with the pick, or if you're wanting to get something from 60 BPM to 90 BPM, that's fantastic. We don't necessarily have to be playing at a, at 100 or trying to play at 190. I was just curious, Mike, what you thought, just speaking about the metronome and, and so forth, what do you think about the sort of uh, strategy, if you like, of, say, you're struggling to play at 100 to then go at 110 and then come down to 100 as opposed to go up to 100 because it's going to feel different slowing down to something even if it's beyond your control at 110 do you think there's something in would you recommend that as a as a strategy with I, I do i do however it depends on what person is going to be using that so I have some of my students who are pretty advanced. And basically, this is a, this is a strategy for somebody who is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more self-aware in what is what the good technique is supposed to look and feel like, and who has a good ear for able to at least catch 
mistakes more so than the average person. And that it going back to what I don't like, the, the, the conventional advice of building speed. Many people like to boil speed down to like this one thing. Some people swear by the strategy that you that you just described, starting at mm-hmm. the speed beyond what you can do to make the slower ones feel easier. And th- there's some validity to that for sure. But there's also a problem that if you don't have a certain level of awareness, you're not going to be able to use that strategy very well. Because if you already play like this, you know, very tense and all that, and you speed up, it just got even worse, but you don't even know how different that is from what how it's supposed to feel. And conversely, starting really, 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 really slow may not work for somebody who, for whom who can't even notice any mistakes happening at you know quarter notes at 40. So it is it's all context dependent, and that's one reason why it is good to have somebody experienced to look at your playing and tell you, okay, this is what you should be doing given your specific context and situation as opposed to just figuring it out on your own, which you could do, but you're kind of playing with fire in a sense, or at least playing with the chance of wasting a bunch of time. If you like this video, you'll love this ebook complete with video examples called 10 Melodic Finger Picking Patterns You Can Learn in 10 Minutes or Less. Do you struggle to make the finger picking patterns you learn on guitar sound like music? Perhaps it's because you believe in one or more of these finger picking pattern myths. One, you need to know a lot of patterns to have your finger picking sound musical. Two, only advanced finger picking patterns sound musical. Easy patterns are too basic to sound any good. Or three, there is a magic pattern out there somewhere that once found will finally have your finger picking sound the way you want it to. None of these myths are true. This is because finger picking patterns alone are not musical, they are technical. It's what you do with the patterns that will determine how musical they sound. In this ebook, you learn how to make the most boring finger picking patterns sound amazing instantly. Plus, the simple trick to make advanced finger picking patterns easier to play, and the thumb and one finger trick that's so simple and will have your finger picking sounding pro in no time. Click the link in the description below this video and download your free ebook complete with video examples, 10 melodic finger picking patterns you can learn in 10 minutes or less. You'll have it in your inbox within minutes. Let me know in the comments below what acoustic guitar topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I read the comments, I love the suggestions that you put forward, many of them do become videos, so don't be shy. If you want to see something, drop us a line and I'll be sure to get to it. If you like this video, then hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video, which will be every single week. Thank you so much for being here. This is Simon Candy from Acoustic guitarlessonsonline.net. As always, I really do appreciate you taking time to check out my videos. I hope they help you playing and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.